we receive here a lot of polling that shows what is going on on our level. And then later on, we get an update on the national level. And this is a little graph that was from Be Informed. You know, they were showing uh, between them and the USDA on the national level, anywhere from a 42% to 50% loss. And that was as of April, 2023. So just a few months ago. Now that would also include from August of 2022, all the way through to April, 2023. Now there are some things that have happened. One would be Hurricane Ian. It was a total devastation. We had a number of 500,000 in lost hives just in the state of Florida. And then you look at the flooding and the wildfires in California, you know, you're looking at somewhere around about a million five hmm. in lost hives in that given period. But that isn't the whole story. The story continues is that Varroa has went unchecked in many bee yards. So there's a lot of losses that are out there. That's why we want to talk about it tonight uh, on Varroa and on small hive beetles. So we're going to be diving deep into what you can do on the local level to keep the, these pests in check. When we look back on these losses, typically it's been 33% loss year over year for the last 10 years. Before that, there was much lower losses because Varroa just wasn't around at that point in time. If it was, it was on a very limited basis. There's just many issues that are out there. It really challenges us as beekeepers. First of all, the mites, and then the small high beetles or pests and the weather. As you can see already in this conversation, the weather played a very, very big role in the losses for April, 2023. It has just been very, very hot. This has all been for the record books and we're kind of in some uncharted territory right now as it pertains to the weather. February was warmer than March. That was an alarming issue for us on the B side, raising bees, you start having cold weather coming in, February's weather into March can really make it really dicey on queen rearing. We, we were able still to get through it, but we we're thankful that we have our breeders in South Georgia that are far warmer weather than we are here. Let's take a look at not leaning on our past experiences, but we need to look at the systemic losses that are happening and that way we can go on the offensive. Being on the offensive for me is making sure that our bees are healthy and that they're thriving. And if they're not thriving, then they're not surviving. Okay, so why is it important to deal with Varroa? 